So I'm on my way to the gym and I know I haven't uploaded anything in a while guys but it's just because I've been so busy with school recently. I hope this camera does not fall off. So I'm done with the Candido program, the six week Candido strength program uh, and I've made some really big strength gains. So my bench went up from 285 to 315. My squat went from, I think, a 315 to a 355. And my deadlift went up from 465 to 515. I was really happy with the progress I've made over the six weeks that I was on that program. So today's workout is going to be a shoulder and back workout. Um, with an emphasis on shoulders. I'm probably gonna do about five exercises for shoulders and three to four exercises for back. If you guys didn't know, um, my shoulders and my back have been, well, I consider one of my most lacking muscle groups in terms of size and strength. So, um, I usually like to incorporate them on the same day just because when I do shoulders, I feel like I'm not having a complete workout because really the only, you know, intense shoulder workout I do is like seated barbell press or a uh, seated dumbbell press. And during my workouts, I like to sweat. It makes me feel satisfied of my workout. Even though I know that sweating is not a good indicator of a good workout, I personally just enjoy it. Um, so that's why I, I incorporate back on my shoulder days as well. Oh, there it is. But anyways, as I was saying, uh, I do a little bit of back exercises on my shoulder days, but I also have a separate back day that I do just for back. And you guys might be wondering why I'm doing back so often. It's because for me personally, I can do very high volume and still be okay to train. Train a muscle group like three times a week and still be fine. I noticed for me especially that um, working out a muscle group two to three times a week for me provides the most growth. Um, because take my shoulders for example, okay? I used to have no shoulders, right? It used to be bicep, tricep, and traps, okay? This, this thing was not here. So, what helped me get a little bit more muscle in my shoulder was um, hitting them two to three times per week, right? So I would do one shoulder day by itself, and then on chest day or push day, I'd also incorporate more shoulders. So just by doing that consistently, I was able to gain a little bit more uh, size on my shoulders. So that's what I'm trying to do right now for my back as well. And I'm still trying to do that for my shoulders. That is the game plan. I'm trying to look like a Dorito before summer. I'm not trying to look like a rectangle, which, which, is, which is how I look like right now. So almost at crunch, so I'll take you guys through a full shoulder and back workout. So this is my pre-workout for today. I'm honestly probably not supposed to drink this just because I can't read any of these ingredients. There's probably like a thousand ingredients in here that is bad for me but I mean I have no choice because I just ran out of pre-workout so this will have to do all right so I'm back with another commentary warming up with Arnold presses right now as you can see and with the Arnold press you want to start with the weights overhead with your palms facing in and as you reach to the top position you want to externally rotate your palms so that your palms face outward. And this was just a warm up for me before I did my regular shoulder presses just because I'm really careful with not getting injured. Um, so I did a uh, seated dumbbell press. I did I believe five sets of five. Pretty heavy. As you can see I'm struggling right there. And I think this is, okay that was done. And then, okay, so next, barbell rows. 
one of my favorite back exercises. So the thing with barbell rows is that it's very easy to cheat um, because you people tend to lift heavier weights by using their hips. But in reality, your upper back should do most of the work. And as you see here, I'm only using, I believe, 35 pounds on each side. And I'm really trying to engage my back, squeezing my lats. And after this, I did a superset with lateral raises. Um, for lateral raises, I, I realized that high reps have been giving me the most growth. And especially for your side deltoid, you don't really need to go heavy. Yeah, I'm looking back at this video. My right shoulder definitely comes up more. Definitely comes up higher. You see that? Oh, shoot. I'm glad I filmed this video because I thought it was even. And then after that, I did one arm just because I kind of had an idea that uh, one side was stronger than the other. So here's another angle of me doing ladder raises. Yeah, so this this workout is a lot of high volume. See, even here, my right side is coming up a little bit higher. I'm glad I filmed this. And then... doing one arm again just to get you know a massive pump yeah also it is so hard to film without someone else because you have to like find the proper angles to place your camera and it's just a ton of work. The view here, I actually placed a camera on the pull-up bar. That's why it, the view looks like it's so, like from up high. And then I believe the exercise I did after this was pull-ups, supersetted with um, bent over rear delt flies. But here's another set of the barbell rows. I'm cheating a little bit because my upper body should not be moving that much but yeah as you see I'm only doing 45 pounds you do not need to go really heavy as long as your form is right and you feel in your back so so next exercise pull-ups did about five five sets of around six to ten reps um, so pull-ups, if you guys didn't know, used to be one of my worst exercises because I could only do one at a time. So what I did to help me be better at doing pull-ups was I literally did like 10 sets of one pull-up. So I do like one pull-up, then I rest, and then I do another pull-up, then I rest. And as time went on, I slowly built it, built it up to like 10 sets of two reps, and I just kept doing that. And that's how I eventually was able to do about like 10 pull-ups per set. It just is just practice, guys. If you're not good at a certain exercise, just keep practicing it and you'll obviously you'll be better at it. So here doing bent over rear delt flies for my rear delts because I mean I think for most people rear delts are just one of those lacking muscle groups in general. Here we're doing lat pull downs, and for lat pull downs, uh, you should really want to keep your chest tall. You want to bring the, oh, well, I personally bring the bar near my upper chest or to, or to middle chest, and I kept my elbows pointed straight down, squeezing my lats, and I switch it up by doing behind the head uh, lat pull downs, but. As you can see, my right side is definitely taking over. So I'm really glad I filmed this video.
Here I'm doing machine rear delt flies. Again, more emphasis on my rear delts because my front delts and my side delts I think are overdeveloped compared to my rear delts. And I do want to look proportional, which is why I'm hitting them more frequently. So I did, I believe, uh, three sets of 15 reps, and then I finished off the workout with alternating bicep curls. Three sets of 12 reps on each arm, 10 to 12 reps on each arm. And I don't usually train arms that much. I don't usually train biceps or triceps that much. Just once in a while because when I first started lifting I would have a separate arm day and I think I did arms too much so I think they look unproportional to the rest of my body which is why I only do them very rarely because I feel like they get stimulated enough during my chest and back workouts. So, yeah, um, that's about it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll catch you guys next time.